Hey guys, to Legit City here. Today we're gonna be talking about Pakus, and that means today's video is going to be the Paku Tamer designs. Of course, these are my Paku Tamer designs. We are using a double setup right here. This is one, this is a second one, and we're taming two separate Pakus. And if you guys didn't know, Pakus are a great food source as the Paku Filet actually gives you a little bit of radiation resistance as well. So because of that, this might be a very popular food. And not only that, their egg reproduction time is very quickly. The egg hatch time is also very quick. So you get quick turnaround, a lot of eggshells, great for steel, great food source because of the rad, rad resistance. And of course, easy to manage. Not only do you not really need to feed the Pakus anything, they allow them to eat seeds now. So feeding them the extra mealwood seeds from the beginning of the game, if you did use mealwood as your starter planet, it just means that you're going to have a lot of food for them. So of course, we'll go over everything about the Paku design. So to get it started, one of the things about Pakus is that we could very easily tame the Pakus. Now, the thing about the tame Pakus, though, is that I will talk about the difference between taming a Paku with seeds versus taming them with algae. Because seeds you could only put by the individual full seed and the fact that the Pakus eat a third of the seed for the cycle, it means that they're not going to eat as frequently from the feeder. Because of that, you're better off using algae in one kilogram sorts on either your dispenser or just putting at one kilogram on the fish feeder. This allows the fish to eat as often as the algae appears. Since the one kilogram is not going to be enough to keep the fish full. And what you're going to be looking for is that every time the fish eats from the feeder, they get the eight from feeder buff that lasts for a full cycle. That means that their wildness is going to be going down and they will eat as often as they can. If you try to tame the Paku with a seed, it's going to take two generations to fully tame, whereas feeding them with algae takes only about 10 cycles. I would recommend one fish per feeder and that way you control how much they eat, make sure that they do always eat from the feeder so that they reduce their wildness. Now that being said, the fish, when they're happy and tame, you could see that they lay an egg 67% per cycle, which means every one and a half cycles, they're going to be able to lay an egg. That's a lot of eggs and they produce a lot of food because of that. Now, of course, that does mean that the eggs they lay will be just as tame as they are, which means that you cannot be able to wild ranch them anymore after they're tame. So because of that, I recommend separating your pools of wild fish from your tame fish. Now, let's get into the design. What we have set up is some automation. We'll go through the concept of the design before we actually explain it. So basically, because the egg takes five cycles to hatch, incubation rate of 20% per cycle, I wanted to have an egg here right before this fish dies. Now, because they live 25 cycles, I wanted to track that age and then move an egg on the 20th cycle onto this chute. That way, when the egg hatches, the fish is dead and we replenish the egg with the tame fish. That means that we get to continue the process and then we start right back over. Now, that means I need to be able to control every 20 cycles we put a fish egg onto this tile. We did that with the automation and that's because of how the fish egg takes five days to incubate. So that's 20 plus five, 25. That's the age of a Paku. Now, of course, how does this work? How do we wait 20 cycles each time? How does this automation work? To get it started, what we're gonna be using is called a triple filter. Filter gates use up to 200 seconds at a time. If this went up to 600, I only had to use one filter gate. But we're basically using the filter gate to count up to 600, and that is how many seconds in a cycle. After that, we use an XOR gate right here to flip-flop the signal. Basically, we have the wait plate send a green signal when there's nothing on it. That sends a signal to the XOR, which sends a green signal out when there's exactly one green, one red. That filter goes into here to count to 600. After that happens, we take this signal and we count that on a signal counter. This is actually just counting the amount of cycles we're on. And this right here says 12. That actually means our fish is actually 12 years old as well. As if we click on the Paku, he's actually 12 cycles of age. 
So this signal counter combo is 1, 2, that's 10, plus 2, 12. So we're counting the age of the fish. Now, when this actually goes green, we get a double green. This becomes red, which basically means this becomes a flip-flop. So every 600 seconds, we flash green for one second, and then we count 600 again. This is better than using any of the other sensors as if you use a cycle sensor or a timer sensor. A lot of, Actually, a timer sensor wouldn't be bad. It's just that the timer sensor, you run into the issue where you can't reset the timer. It's on a set timer of whatever you set it to. And you can't really tie that to the weight plate as accurate as running a triple filter. As running a triple filter, you literally have to count from 1 to 600 every time you flash red. So this is more accurate, and you wouldn't have a lot of room for error this way. So this is the more accurate way to do it. Now, of course, the signal counter here it might be a little bit confusing. Every time we get a green signal, we count that. So this goes up to 10. This bottom one that counts the single digits, we have it on advanced mode so that once it hits 10, it sends a green signal to this, which counts the 10 digits. And then that resets this automatically so we could continue counting. This output port goes into the input of the second signal so that once this counts up to 10, this goes up and this resets. And then once this hits 2, we send a green signal to open the chute. That green signal is going to stay open until an egg gets there or until 10 cycles pass because another 10 cycles means that this is going to reset back to one. So usually you're not going to have to wait 10 cycles. As I said before, they lay an egg every 1.5 cycles and there's two of them. So we'll get an egg there as soon as possible, usually less than a cycle. Now, how this signal plate works is we have this on below three kilograms. This three kilograms is basically going to be tied to the Paku egg that weighs four kilograms. And we want to make sure that when the egg shells hatch, it doesn't mess with the, the weight sensor. So that's why we have it set to below three. So that means when the egg is on here, that's four kilograms, we send a red signal. When a red signal goes through this, the cycle sensor right here, or the XOR right here shuts off and the filter gates reset. That's because of the red signal to here, and this will forcefully reset. Now we have a NOT gate on this, and this goes into an automation cable to reset both the signal counters. This goes directly from the NOT gate into here and into here. This means that once we get an egg, it's going to force reset the counter, and it's going to start counting again once the egg hops off. So at the end of the egg hatch, it's, you're going to get a wild Paku flopping, and it's going to wildly flop off of the weight plate, which sends our green signal again after it flops off. That literally counts the start of the fish's life, and we start counting how many cycles it's living. Now, of course, we have a couple of auto sweepers right here. You can see that this one cannot reach the egg. That's designed like that purposely. This auto sweeper will pick up the egg and deliver it into this loader, and which is why we have a pneumatic door there so that we could still sweep to that tile. This auto sweeper does the same thing and sweeps up the eggs, polluted dirt, eggshells, whatever it is, into this loader, Paku fillets after the fish dies, and we send that into the direct areas. We have a filter at the bottom. Uh, depends on what you want to sweep out. This actually pulls out the dirt specifically out from the system. And we'll show you the rail line right now. So the loader goes here. We have the polluted dirt filtered out so that it doesn't hop onto the weight plates. And so that we always have any of the fish, regardless of it's the gulp fish, tropical fish, or the regular Paku, just hop onto the weight plates. That way we always have a tame fish inside. Now the way we're feeding is we have a separate automation up top. This has duplicates able to access. We have the doors locked right here. So no dupes could actually go to this area. And that's so that we don't accidentally have the dupes grab the egg from the uh, weight plates. That's one thing you have to prevent. You cannot allow dupes in here. And after the build is finished, you have to be able to do everything on automation. The weight plates reset if you pull the egg out. So that kind of ruins the design. So make sure your duplicates don't have access into here. Now the top automation right here, we have a simple cycle sensor onto a signal counter, onto two dispensers. This is how we time the feeds for the uh, fish feeders down here. You don't need to do this really, but because I don't want duplicates to have access to the bottom, I had to do this. And it's very simple. We just have a 1% on whatever time of the day you want. That sends a green signal 
to a signal counter and this is set to three on advanced mode so that means that every three cycles we release the contents and then we immediately reset and that means we feed one kilogram of seed which is exactly one seed every three cycles of paku fish goes through a seed one full seed every three cycles so that's how we're doing the math for that so that's how we're automatically feeding the fish the auto sweeper will pick up the seed put it into the fish feeder and we have that on a counter you could actually change this to one in the beginning if you're trying to tame your fish as that's going to be the easier way to do that now we also have the auto super up top this is to pick up the egg shells from the hatched paku egg right here and that just uh, sends it to the loader right here and sends it out now of course looking back at the automation everything is pretty straightforward all the filter gates are set to 200 seconds the individual digit counter the single digits is set to advanced mode 10 the one that counts the 10 digits basically 10 and 20 is set to 2 on regular mode that has been the paku tamer design that we have right here fully automatic dupes do not have to do anything all we have to do is send the seed in the uh every three days outside of that dupe guns don't have to do anything here but guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's video over the Paku taming design. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.